All right, today um, we're working separately. Mikhail's down doing some stuff on his sled. I've been finishing up uh, some of the greenhouse. This project behind me started back when it was summer. It's a garage, um, a guest space, because our house is small, and a greenhouse for starting plants this spring. Uh, we usually would bought them, but this year we're gonna be starting our own. So it's a 12 by 16 greenhouse um, with twin wall polycarbonate panel and we're building some benches for today to put our trays on. Um, I've started, I've completed a couple of them. We'll take you inside and show you those. But um, we're gonna heat, the elect heat it with electric this year and uh, some heat mats and we'll probably end up uh, building a small greenhouse within the greenhouse for the really cold months when February and it's you know minus 10 here. Um, so we have to heat the whole greenhouse. We can just heat a smaller, um, like a, almost, um, like a cold frame inside the greenhouse and we'll heat that with some heat mats. So let's take a walk inside and we'll see what we've got done so far. So looking inside the greenhouse, uh, we got a door that goes into the garage, some of the rafters here and detail work. Um, we had a pretty good snow load up here in Burke, so we've uh, built for that. Here's looking out the door. Here's one of the benches that I got built so far. Um, these benches are folding so we can fold them down or lift them up. I'm going to make some legs for them, and uh, here's one that's in its folded position, so we can kind of open up this greenhouse. Um, we have, a, like I said, a small house, so this may be a space that we can fold down these benches midsummer evening and host a little dinner out here. Um, so we're getting ready uh, to make some legs and make a new bench top here. So it's kind of construction zone right now. So we've chosen to really electrify our house. Um, electric, electricity in Vermont is basically renewable. It comes from hydro uh, power mostly and the solar we generate on our house. When we built our house, we put enough solar panels to meet our need. However, now that we've added a greenhouse and a guest space and we're utilizing the barn more, um, our energy usage is a little a bit above what our solar panels are. We do have option uh, down the road to put some solar panels up on the barn roof and add to our system, which is in the plans, uh, but we're waiting for to see what happens with incentives statewide. Also, how the electricity goes. I mean, if we get more electric cars on the road and we end up with an electric car someday, we'd want to be able to size for that also. So looking at heating this space with electricity, again, it's renewable <clears throat> and I don't have to worry about a flame out here. Um, so. We're trying to electrify as much as we can. It, I think it's the way of the future, and um, we're all going to be doing more electric electricity use. The heater we're using in the greenhouses is BioGreen Phoenix that labels upside down because you can hang it either uh, from the ceiling or from the floor. The label on the other side is the right side up. It's a 240 volt uh, heater, um, but only draws nine or ten amps um, when it's running, and um, it's got a precision thermometer on top. Um, you can also set it to three different power levels. You can run fan only just to circulate the heat in your greenhouse. So, so far I've been working out here 30 degree days, keeping it like 50 degrees in here while I work, enough to take my gloves off and uh, fiddle around, but um, hopefully this will keep our greenhouse nice and warm. It should heat this space. It's sized to heat a little bit bigger of a greenhouse than what we have here. Um, so I'm hoping I can run it on the 1800 mark. Got a little distracted there talking about electricity. This is uh, starting the legs for the side benches. I'm going to rip these 2x8s down into 2x4s, cut a little notch in them, and they should fit right up into the holes that I made in the benches. I'm going to make them so they can be removed so we can fold those benches down, um, get them out of the way. Um, kind of a simple leg. So here you can see the finished leg now. It fits right in that little hole. And um, we're going to finish this off with some lobster cage wire on the top. I've got three more legs to make for the other side now. And here's the other side. I'm 
make one more table for the middle here. We have four foot by 10 foot table going down the middle. All right, so I just cut all the pieces for the center table. These are 10 foot long, sort of two by four-ish, and some other side pieces over here. So we're gonna put all these together now into a table. All right, so here's frame so far. Uh, I gotta add some legs to it and flip it over. Um, but I uh, just wanna point out a tool I like on the, on the farm here, this uh, impact driver. Um, I used to use a screw gun for putting in screws and all that now, um, but ever since I got one of these babies, um, I don't do any big screws with a screw gun anymore. Impact driver, so worth the investment. You can drive big long four inch screws effortlessly, uh, rarely strips out. I also like the star bit screws. You can see them here. Um, I prefer the star bit. I don't ever have a strip. I don't ever fall out of them and um, it works really well. So highly recommended impact driver for building projects. Um, even when I frame walls, sometimes I'll use the impact driver and put one screw in uh, to get it all set up and then I nail it. Um, so it just makes it a little easier um, and it also holds better. Uh, a little more expensive to put a screw in every stud, but I think in the long run when you're building by yourself, it uh, really helps out. So impact driver, screws for building, um, really recommend them. I'm going to put a uh, potting bench over in this corner. So that's going to be a potting bench where you can pot your plants up and then they'll slide down the tray. And the other corner is going to be a water barrel and that's where our water is going to come in next spring when we can dig it. Uh, this spring we're going to have to uh, haul water from the house down here. But... Alright, so now you can really kind of see how this is going to lay out. Um, I picked up everything, cleaned up all my tools. And uh, so we got a bench on this side table in the middle, another bench over there, and uh, not a bad day's project. So just waiting for that lobster wire, we'll put it on there, and then uh, once we get through the cold part of the winter here, spring will come, this place will be booming with life. All right, it's the next day, but I have enough light now to give you a, a tour of the final benches that are done. Uh, we still have more to do in the greenhouse. We gotta install some ventilation fans, some more electricity. I gotta build a, a box for doing early season seedlings, uh, but this is where we are right now. So here's the benches. We got a 12 foot bench there. Another, here's the 10 foot bench all done. Let's go back in the door to get this one in. There's a 10 foot bench, you can see the two seedling trays on it. And then we got another bench over here. Still got to build a workstation for right here. But uh, there's the greenhouse coming along. Another part of the greenhouse McCown I just installed is this hand forged latch on the door. So, lots of greenhouse stuff coming through. But Cal made this on his forge. So I just finished building this thing. Um, this is going to be a box that I'm going to cover with the polycarbonate panel. Um, and that's going to sit on this table and have four grow lights in it um, and then some heat mats. So this way we can heat in the coldest part of the months. We can heat up uh, just a small space for our seedlings when they start. Um, and then as they move, I'm going to mount this um, and you'll see off of some pulleys so we can pull up to the ceiling um, and get out of our way. We can work in the plants and then we can lower it back down over the plants um, to keep them warm and with light. Um, and you can see it would just fold it down one of the tables in here. So you can see how that opens up some space early in the season here. Um, but again, just built this thing um, out of some two by sixes. Again, shout out to my friend John who gave me a bunch of two by sixes and he didn't want to move back to Michigan. Um, sad to see him move back to Michigan, um, but he's helped us get ahead on this greenhouse project. So thanks, John. And Wendy, John and Wendy both gave us the two by sixes. So uh, look forward to seeing them back this summer. All right, so I'm gonna start putting some polycarbonate on this. If you've never, I've never worked with this stuff before, uh, this project, but here it is. So polycarbonate 
uh, sheets. Um, you can see on the end here, um, it's got two cavities in there, so it gives you about an R two and a half or so, um, which is not bad for um, this. It's actually better than glass, and it's um, pretty strong and durable stuff. It does scratch pretty easy, but um, it cuts good. I'm using a uh, fine tooth blade of my saw here to cut it, um, so at least 60 teeth goes pretty well. Uh, I need to say, you know, eye protection is a must when cutting this stuff, but it cuts really well. Uh, you do, if you're putting it on, not on this project, but if you put it on the greenhouse, you'll get some plastic in here and an air compressor to blow out um, those spaces uh, to get the plastic out of them is, is good. Here, I'll probably just tap it on the ground, um, but I'm gonna cover this in polycarbonate, um, and uh, we'll have a little greenhouse within a greenhouse. So it's important when you're working with this uh, polycarbonate that one side is UV protected and the other side's not. So this side has to go out towards the sun at all times. Um, but get ready to screw some of this down. All right, here's a completed box. Uh, we're gonna add some grow lights and some heat mats. And we should be able to get some seeds started early February with this thing. Um, my view of it over here. So keep the heat in there and uh, be able to start some seedlings early on, like onions will need to be started really early and we'll be able to get them in there and uh, start them up. I work as a hand in San Saba Fences and windmills to mend I've been out on a crew Eating tumbleweed stew Three weeks in the rain